Hi everyone, Jackie Edwards here. Welcome to Friday's Live at Lunchtime. Thank you so much for joining me. Sorry I'm at a bit of a weird angle here. My my phone is almost out of battery, so this is as far as the, the little cord reaches so that I can get it plugged in and stay connected. So anyways, hopefully you're all having a great day. Um, a little bit gray and cloudy here, but we're almost at the weekend, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, today I had a question from someone about maintenance and who's responsible for it. And this is between your tenant and yourself in an HMO. So when you have an HMO um, and all of your tenants are on separate ASTs, so um, then it's it's quite difficult if there's any maintenance or anything breaks in the communal areas. So her question was stuff like, you know, if one of the toilet seats breaks in one of the communal areas, who's responsible for fixing it? And are you able to charge tenants for this? So my response is normally with anything like this, we just take care of it. Um, it is really difficult if all the tenants are on separate ASTs, unless somebody comes forward and says, yep, I broke that, I'm happy to pay for it. You're gonna be really hard pressed to charge just one person for it. And the other tenants, if it wasn't them that broke that toilet seat or whatever it was, they're going to be really upset that they're getting charged for it because they are all on separate ASTs. They don't all know each other. So if it wasn't them that broke it, they're going to be thinking, why am I paying for what somebody else broke? So most of the communal area damage is stuff that we pay for. And most of our tenants, we all of our tenants basically I would say, none of them are maliciously damaging anything. So from time to time things break. We do have broken toilet seats, shower heads. Um, you know, we've had broken oven doors when somebody must have just shut the door maybe a little bit too hard and the glass shattered. I mean, some of these things, they just wear out. Sometimes accidents happen. Um, and we do just, we have been just replacing any kind of communal area things that break. Um, we have had tenants say, oh, yes, you know, this has happened. I'm happy to pay for it type thing. But that's kind of rare. Most of the time they just say, oh, my, the oven broke. So in that case, we just send somebody out and pay for it. We haven't had anything too major happen and nothing out of the ordinary. So if it was maybe something a bit more unusual or something you know somebody did on purpose, then I probably would try to have a chat with that tenant and get them to pay the fees for it. Um, and the same when people move out. So if people move out and there's communal area damage, you are going to really struggle to hold back any of the tenant's deposit for any of that damage because, again, you can't prove that it was them that made the damage. So if they you know, refuted the claim with the, the deposit company, the deposit company is most likely going to <coughs> oh, sorry about that. They're most likely going to side with the tenant on it. So when you're dealing with kind of communal area damage, communal area breakages and maintenance, um, most of the time we're the ones that take care of it and fix it. They're usually low cost items. Again, a toilet seat, stuff like that. Maybe the tap breaks. Um, if it's a bigger item, you'd probably be looking more at something malicious and you'd want to be understanding what's going on in the house, what's going on with your tenants, are these the kind of tenants that you want in the property, um, and making an assessment from there. So most of what we do is because we have good relationships with our tenants and we work well with them, we, we just cover that kind of damage. We try to get it done quickly um, and make sure that it's not going to happen again and keep them happy and it keeps us happy and it keeps things moving along. So hopefully that helps explain how things go with damage. If there's damage in the bedroom, so, and again, sometimes things break, you know, a drawer might break in the wardrobe, a bed frame might break a little bit, one of the slats might break. If it's stuff that's just kind of general wear and tearish type things, we'll put together a replacement for the tenant. If it is obviously malicious damage or the tenant did something that broke it, um, then we would be looking for them to compensate for it. And when it's in their bedroom, you would have a lot more chance to withhold any amounts from their deposit to fix things. As long as you've done an inventory when the tenant moved in and I don't have time to go into all the different levels of inventory, so maybe that'll be something for next time. Um, but 
yeah, so if there's damage in the bedroom, you'd have a better chance of charging a tenant for it because you can know which tenant it was. In the communal areas of an HMO, it's harder to know which tenant did it. If the tenants are all on one tenancy agreement, it is a lot easier to charge them for maintenance and any breakages and repairs. So in that situation, if your tenants kind of all moved in together as a group, they're all on the same AST, and that means they're kind of jointly liable for any damages and any... Um, maintenance and again it's not you know a broken toilet seat I would say is just a kind of a standard maintenance items things wear out I would still be covering that but if it was maybe a broken oven door or you know the door on the fridge broke and it was more from neglecting from the tenants not using it properly or being too hard on it then there is a bit more of a case to um, charge everybody for it. But when they're just on a standard AST for their room only, um, none of the tenants kind of moved in together, know each other, then you're probably better off and it's probably just easiest to pay for the maintenance yourself. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps. Hopefully others of you found that a useful question when thinking about your property business. And with that, I'm going to leave because it's time for personal training for me. And then I've got lots to do this afternoon. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend wherever you are. And I will see you again on Monday for the deal analysis. Again, if you have any deals that you want me to have a look at um, property-wise, then send them through. You can just send me a Facebook message here. And I will look at them to be on our deal analysis for Monday. So have a great day, and I'll see you next week. Oops.